Yes, I am, John, and uh, at the moment we're standing by here, even as you. You're going to hear something different in a few minutes, too, at liftoff. Uh, you'll hear a voice change as launch control at the Cape gives way to mission control here in Houston. Hugh Harris, who's been doing the reporting job from there, will be replaced by John McLeish here. And Neil Hutchinson, centered in this picture, the fellow in the blue shirt with the beard that's pushing buttons right now, Neil Hutchinson, the flight director, and his team will assume control of the entire operation. Uh, Hutchinson here has been checking, going round the horn is the expression they use, and they're getting green lights on all consoles, meaning there's nothing to delay the launch as uh, mission control in Houston hears it and sees it. Uh, they will actually assume control of the flight at the point where the spacecraft flies beyond the tower. The tower uh, is just a, a limiting factor. It has nothing really to do with the tower being there. It's just a point in space where that spacecraft is high enough that it's flying. To all intents and purposes, once in flight, the flight director, of course, takes over, and uh, they keep going round and round. Now, the tracking stations out across the Atlantic will be reporting back, and there's a critical tracking station that we will be listening for here. That station's in Madrid, Spain, as the spacecraft on that tracking map that you see it, on the big tracking map up at the top of your picture, top left. Uh, when the spacecraft flies out, over, arching over Europe on the first orbit, at that point, the flight director will make the go-no-go -go for the crew uh, as they uh, uh, are then given the go to at least stay in orbit for, uh, stay, in, stay in space for a few orbits. All right, I think that's the picture from Houston up to this moment. Let's stand by with you at the Cape. Okay, Roy, thank you. Uh, we feel we have about 45 seconds to go now until the nine-minute hold uh, is, is over. And at that point, let's talk just a moment about what you'll be hearing. Uh, you will be hearing the voice of Hugh Harris, who will start in about 30 seconds from now. And the computers will take over this launch at this point at nine minutes, and the ground launch sequencer initialization will start. And from then on, it'll be in the hands of the computers. And what you'll be hearing mainly will be the voice of launch control here at the Kennedy Space Center, Hugh Harris. We won't do much talking unless we feel that he's getting too complicated, so you'll hear the real words about this, this launch. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus nine beginning. minutes and holding. We are approximately 26 seconds away from picking up the countdown at the T-minus nine minute point. Nine minutes remaining between now and 7 a.m. when we expect to have a liftoff of America's first space shuttle. Uh, the launch team has been briefed on the way in which a halt can be called to the countdown. During the final nine minutes of the uh, countdown, and we're coming out, we're at T-minus nine minutes and counting. The launch events are being controlled by the ground launch sequencer now that has been initiated, and that will be in control up to T-minus 25 seconds when they switch to the onboard redundant set launch sequencer. The ground launch sequencer is a part of the launch processing system and operates by relaying commands to the orbiter's onboard computers, which then report back to the launch processing system that the commands have been executed. The primary job of the computers is to check that all of the launch commit criteria, such as propellant loads, temperatures, pressures, and other measurements, are satisfactory. The primary chase aircraft have taken off. Uh, a third T-38 will take off at the T-minus five-minute mark. The timing of this plane uh, is such a tight window that a 15-second delay would mean that they would not be in the proper position at launch. The sleek T-38 supersonic trainers have such critical timing because of the small fuel load that they carry. T-minus seven minutes, 52 seconds, and counting. The voice of Hugh Harris from Launch Control. Uh, approximately 40 seconds away from movement of the orbiter access arm. Uh, this is the final arm which was to be moved out of the way to provide for the orbiter uh, to clear the tower properly. Uh, this may be a very uh, interesting launch to watch from the standpoint that the orbiter is able to translate uh, slightly horizontally as it begins to lift off and it also does a roll maneuver uh, which will uh, place it, uh, the orbiter sort of on its back as it goes uh, towards the uh, proper inclination to the equator. T minus seven minutes, seven seconds and counting. 
T minus seven minutes and counting. And we have retraction of the orbiter access arm, beginning to move back first uh, away from the orbiter and then to swing away. This was the walkway attached to the service structure and used by the crew to walk to the orbiter. The crew has been advised uh, to lower their helmet visors. Very slow movement by the orbiter access arm. T minus six minutes, 29 seconds and counting. The crew is beginning the APU pre-start. Uh, this, the start begins at the five minute point in the countdown. T minus six minutes, 15 seconds and counting. The APUs are turbine devices fueled by hydrazine, which provides hydraulic power to change the angle of the engines and the flight surfaces on the orbiter. T minus five minutes, 59 seconds and counting. Pilot uh, Bob Crippen had begun that APU pre-start, which uh, started about 48 seconds from now. The development flight instrumentation, which measures the stresses on the orbiter during flight, have been turned on and recorders uh, uh, store information for playback after landing. T minus five minutes, 30 seconds, mark and counting. Pilot Bob Crippen has signified the auxiliary power units are ready to be started. T minus five minutes, 15 seconds and counting. Coming up on the five minute point, four, three, two, one, mark. T minus five minutes and counting. We have had a go for APU start. APU start is in work. This is a start sequence. The final chase plane has taken off from Patrick Air Force Base. T minus four minutes, 42 seconds and counting. T minus four minutes, 30 seconds and counting. Once we get the APU start, we have a total of 12 minutes of hydrazine supply for running the APUs prior to a liftoff. Everything going very smoothly in this count. The APU start is complete. T minus four minutes, 10 seconds and counting. As preparation for main engine ignition, the main fuel valve heaters have been turned off. T minus three minutes, 57 seconds and counting. The final helium purge on the shuttle main engine has been started in preparation for engine start. The liquid oxygen replenish system has been turned off in preparation for pressurization of the tanks uh, for the launch. T minus three minutes, 35 seconds and counting. The Elevon speed brake and rudder are being moved through a pre-programmed pattern to assure that they'll be ready for use in flight. T minus three minutes, 20 seconds and counting. The shuttle is now on internal power. However, the fuel cells are still receiving their fuels from the ground support system for one more additional minute.